Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, our next hot topic talks about betrayal by elected leaders. Aiding bandits would not be to tolerated. And that is according to the Northern Democratic Forum. They have warned that it would not tolerate any form of betrayal by elected leaders who assist on enable banditry in Nigeria. The group expressed concerns over reports of politicians allegedly collaborating with bandits, calling it a betrayal of public trust. The NDF urged leaders to prioritize the safety and well-being of citizens and pledged to hold accountable any officials found to be aiding criminal activities. Now, joining us to have a conversation on this is Augustine Egger, is a security expert, and Biodu Shoumi is a political analyst. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Our pleasure. Good morning. All right, so um, we're talking banditry, we're talking terrorism, we're talking, um, you know, criminal activities in Nigeria. And insecurity is a major thing. In fact, um, insecurity or security takes a huge chunk of our budget, and that's how important and crucial it is. But we've been hearing of reports, we've been hearing of, well, rumors, allegedly, that some of our leaders, people who are supposed to protect us, who are supposed to be the ones to say, yes, the welfare and security of Nigerians um, are our own primary responsibility. Some of them just happen to be part of, you know, these criminal activities. They aid it as well. And now we've seen the Northern um, Democratic Forum come out to say that they're just not going to, uh, you know, just tolerate it in any way or in any form. But Augustine, you are a security expert. I'm sure you've heard these rumors before. This might not just be the first time. How do you think our security um, in Nigeria is doing at the moment? I know we've not really heard a lot about um, kidnapping as such compared to earlier parts of the year, but how do you think we're doing security-wise in Nigeria? Uh, well, um, thank you. Uh, for, so, so far, I, uh, I think um, we cannot say we are not doing well or the system is not doing well in terms of providing security. There will mm. always be insecurity as long as we also have economic crisis. Mm. Uh, when you have a stable economy, you have a stable security. When the economy is unstable, you should know that you still have problems with security mm. because the two can are inseparable. So, uh, so far, we, uh, like you said, we've not been hearing much, but I know kidnapping is the order of the day now. Kidnapping is a major thing that we're having across the regions. Hmm. Kidnapping is the main thing. Other uh, most violent activity like terrorism, we see that there is uh, a, it, it's, it's reduced to some point. Banditry and all of those things are like stealing. And people are stealing mainly because the economy is harsh on them. But that is not an excuse. But for me, uh, nationwide, I can say that we are not totally there. We cannot say we are we are we are very safe, but mm. for now, it is not like before. Mm. Okay, so I guess it's a step in the right direction. It's little, um, you know, little steps that were taken to ensure the security of Nigerians. But I don't, I'm going to come to you now. You know, this is a strong warning by the NDF. And I'm sure, of course, there's been reports for them to be able to say this. Why do you think they've been able to issue this strong warning right now? And I mean, why now even? Um, you know, these allegations, they're quite a strong one um, because you expect that the people who are supposed to protect you um, should do that and not be aiding a banditry or terrorism in any form. But why do you think the NDF, what could have prompted the MDF, an NDF to issue this strong warning? And why now? Do you think there's some form of evidence that they've seen? I, I just want to understand that. Yes, uh, before addressing your point, we need to interrogate one thing. Maybe right now, the issue is, is there a link between the stoppage of bank robbery in Nigeria and the mutation of um, uh, the de degradation, degradation of uh, Boko Haram's capacity mm. in a way that it has mutated into banditry? That is a matter, you know, that needs to be investigated because terrorism is usually financed um, through different means, including bank robbery. But we have suddenly seen bank robbery going off and then banditry picking up. So is there a relationship to that? Now, to focus on your question, 
uh, which is precisely um, on the issue of sponsorship of um, terrorism yes. in Nigeria, uh, which is another hand way of uh, sponsoring terrorism. Mm. We, you will recall that some years ago, during Buhari's administration, the United Arab Emirates you know, came out with a list of alleged sponsors of terrorism in Nigeria. We were assured by the then Attorney General uh, Malami that uh, it will be investigated and those who are supporting terrorism will be exposed and processed through the criminal justice system. Yeah. Till today, nothing happened. We have had of people, you know, arrested on suspicion of um, sponsoring terrorism. Um, you know, somebody was arrested in Egypt and all that. And till today, we don't know the outcome of all these cases. Now, we have a clear case of an indictment of a legislator in Nigeria sponsoring a bandit, you know, to uh, out of the country on a pilgrimage. You know, it's quite shocking. And yet, uh, you know, this legislator is allowed to walk the street. So we, on one part, while we're condemning terrorism, you know, without tackling the causes of terrorism and also the sponsorship of terrorism, um, on the other hand, we are saying that we are very serious about tackling these issues, which is creating a major problem for us. Uh, banditry is not just a crime. It's not just like any other crime. You know, this is really organized banditry. That's what we have in Nigeria. It's like uh, organized terrorism. It's mm. a real, well-organized crime where people are taken into the bush, kidnapped, and a lot of money, you know, extorted from them, even in foreign currencies. We have um, we introduced name stroke same issue linkage with the promise that uh, Issa Patami promised the former minister for communications that this will end up solving the issue of banditry. But we still see bandits, terrorists, still posting issues on social media without any means of tracking them or mm. the security services not doing enough, you know, to pick up these guys. So mm. for me. Who is really sponsoring terrorism? Mm. And when you look at the list of the UAE and what we have had over the years, how many of these people have been interrogated mm. by the security services? Mm. So it's quite very worrying that um, we find ourselves in this situation to the point that elected leaders can even be seen to be linked to terrorists mm. or bandits one way or the other. Okay, Augustine, um, I mean, with what Mr. Shomi just even said, whereby we're seeing people, uh, leaders sponsoring this, why are we not able to ensure that we can bring these criminals to books? Because I, know, I want to believe that with, um, you know, with banditry or terrorism, most times when they have funding, it's being done through a bank because you have to get the money from a bank. I'm sure there are ways that we can fish them out. What are we doing with our own security aperture in Nigeria to ensure that we bring these people to justice? Hmm. Well, we, we cannot deal, crime does not, does not happen. Uh, uh, let me say there's always a compromise in any system before crime can happen. Mm. And yeah, so uh, from what Mr. Biodio have said, he has thrown a lot of light to what we expect this, uh, our leaders should be doing for the yeah. past uh, eight years to what we are having right now. We should not be on this again. We should have dealt with all of those issues and solved them and see where our current situation in security will be. Mm. But uh, they turn a blind eye. And um, these individuals, they are bold enough to do all of this because there's a backup somewhere. Mm. And like he said actually it's a handshake thing the banks are not totally exonerated yeah. from all this criminality especially when it comes to sponsorship because the money is always wired through a system mm -hmm. but then can we hold the banks accountable no because some of these banks they know that uh, what they are after are some identity uh, management in the bank like they said okay your bvn your nin and all of that some people can use uh, fictitious names at least I've worked in the bank before. They use uh, all, they can use all kind of names, mm. and then to open certain accounts and transfer those monies, and then take it out elsewhere in cash to wherever they want to take it to. So I think on that part, yes, the bank can do some monitoring, but to some extent, 
Mm. They cannot really, they also have their own code of conduct. Remember, all banks, they have code of conduct. Privacy is a very key thing in the bank. And so uh, they are also in business. And we know that they can help. But when they see some certain amount that is too much, I think there's always a red flag on that. But even when there is a red flag, would the other people on the other hand, uh, the enforcement people, do they follow up? I do know that banks have a system that can easily flag up some of these uh, which uh, withdrawers or which money coming in. But what of if the alert goes to the other system, do they follow up to the end? That is the problem. Mm -hmm. So um, tracking these people, uh, they, they, they don't operate in a space. They don't operate in a, they operate in communities. Mm -hmm. Most of these individuals they operate in communities. I mean, local governments. And that means they're very close to the people. And if we've had this betrayal by leaders, even sponsoring them, I can tell you these leaders come from communities. Right. And that also shows uh, the level of due diligence which they followed before they got into that power. Because over here, there should be security clearance before you, you get to such sensitive positions of making laws for the country or even in the local level. But we see that they totally ignore the security clearance. If you can pay and then you get there, that's why we're having all this. Because we don't have a good background check on these people who want to serve, who are coming there to make laws. Some come there to protect the interests of their criminality. That's what they do. Mm. They come there in a cabal system and they know that they have something running behind. This is just the truth about it. So they right. come from these backgrounds and they leave some of these people that uh, take into this crime are some of the people who work for them. Mm. They work for them to put them in power. And we know right. this is not something very far from politics and the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When they come there, they, are still, they still have link with their people. They still have link on, at the grassroots. Which are some of these people uh, are fermenting some of these issues, creating insecurity in their communities. So um, if we must cut these people off from getting there, we should be very, uh, very, very uh, clear with yeah. our system. That is security checks. Security clearance. Yeah. We should have appropriate security clearance before they get there. But even when they do this, and they know that they found some issues that are not right, they still bury it and allow them to go. I think this falls at the party level. The party people have a lot of problems. The party uh, system in Nigeria are the ones who can protect us, even before those people get there, because everything happens at the party level. But when they see it, they see the red flags, they leave it. Mm. And these people find themselves there. And tomorrow we see some linkage like what we are having here. And they see try somehow to politicize it and bring it down and say it's just okay, our, our okay, opponents. Okay. I think that's not fun. All right. Beodrin, yeah. so, I mean, in one minute, I want to get your final thoughts. What's the way forward? Because, like you've, like um, Augustine has said, you know, it's, it's almost like a cabal system. And you would expect our leaders to protect us. I know that the NDF is issuing this strong warning, but you would also expect that from the federal government and ensuring that anyone who is found culpable should definitely face this, the, the justice system. So what's the way forward, especially if we're saying that we want to fight insecurity in our and win the war? Yeah, I think the way forward is um, for us to make a resolution as a nation. Mm. Anyone indicted or with suspected link, you know, to uh, terrorists uh, should not be spared. It's not just about interrogation. They should be processed through the criminal justice system. And then on the other hand, political parties like uh, my colleague said, uh, need to begin to look carefully are the candidates they are presenting. And in my view, I think people need to uh, go through some form of um, security screening at the party level. It's not only when uh, they are being appointed as ministers, you know, or DG or one board or agency that uh, they need to be screened. So candidates electing for office should be screened properly to make sure that there is no linkage with organized criminals you know, right. in our country. And not until we begin to do that, I don't think we can address this problem. All right. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, gentlemen. This is how much we can take on the show right now. Thank you for coming, Augustine Egger and Biodun. Thank you. We hope that, you know, security would be paramount with our leaders and they would understand that they need to, um, you know, just ensure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are safe and not even aiding banditry or terrorism in Nigeria. And one day would have a nation that is so safe and secure and even other people can come visit. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming and discussing this with me. Thank you. Thank you for
All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, we're speaking with Augustine Edgar. He's a security expert and also Biodun Shoumi is a political affairs analyst. And we've just been talking about the fact that the Northern De Democratic Forum has issued a strong warning that anyone who is aiding banditry would not be tolerated, any leader. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having the breakfast with me. My name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.